We are now in our final in-game execution lesson. What a ride it has been. I hope you've gained a ton of value so far from this course. Let's close it out strong here and talk about the beast reptile combination. Our next team is gonna be sort of a budget build here. It's not all floor across the board. This one was very cheap, less than a 10th of an Ethereum. I end up playing this plant again, just cause I'm suspecting to see grass snake on your way up. You're not really gonna need it. So you can just play hot soon or hot butt with leaf bug serious and pumpkin you don't necessarily need the bidens yeah but the midline 45 speed all beast cards no zero cost but i mean sheesh this is nasty and i can show you here that uh this was on sale today 0.21 for this strong of a beast build certainly not bad you can see that it was kind of going for over 0.3 on the last couple of sales which i mean that's the minimum i'd expect to see this sell for so i scooped it i thought it'd be cool to add in to today's video as just a little alternative. I don't really think I recommended Arco too much in the team building section, but it's viable for sure. So this is an example of perhaps cutting corners a little bit on the back liner. Maybe you're really interested in Beast and you want to spend a little extra on him. That's fine. But again, we're keeping in theme here. 46 faster on the back than on the midline, okay? That's important. Let's take a look at how this variation plays out. The difference is, is that Arco allows me to speed up. I have this instead of the clamshell. It provides more shield. It's native to my class. It's a beast card. So the damage there against plants is nice. And then on the back, I mean, I'm building like a very high throttle team here. This clearly doesn't have that much longevity in a 1v1, but it has some really nice damage across the board and some balance. I have some massive bird damage mixed into this build, which can give me a leg up in some matchups. Even against double aquas, being able to slap them with one of these is gonna be a lot of damage. Obviously a beast at the midline is gonna be toast to even two of these with a lagging in between. So risky feather lagging, risky, that's a dead beast. And remember, if you end up with any build that has risky feather this applies to attack down to this axie that means your following hit is going to do significantly less damage i think 40 percent less so you want to use a low damage card to get rid of that debuff you don't want to play this followed up by a jaguar that would be pretty tragic so round one he doesn't have any steals i don't have a great draw keeping in line with our strategy of using efficient cards right something like a beast that does well against plants i'm trying to hold out for that combo. I'm not really wanting to play Chomp and Risky into this. That's going to be way better spent on the Aqua at the mid. So we're going to be patient. We're chilling. And he goes huge on shield here. Two hot butts, pumpkin. So that was a really nice round to not be firing away. Similar story here in round two. No steals on this team. So I can take my time. I'm not sure about his play here. I'm confident. Don't quite get what he's doing there. That does boost your chance of a crit, but it seems way better spent to <laughs> Uh, like negate a stun in the mid game or just shield up a little in the mid game but nonetheless that's what he decides to do he's now at three energy and we're at six so at this point i have a nice plant draw i feel like it's a good time to get value here he's been firing away i think there's a chance i can live and i'm not investing much just one energy to play these three in the zigzag i consider going all beast cards here but decide to hold off on the arcos the reason why is that it's sort of sad to play over 180 shield and not be defending at the same time this is great brick wall potential to get more use out of my beast in the midsection i just thought it'd be good to control Control the energy, try to guarantee that he only has two this round, and uh, you know, perhaps start to chip away at this plant here. I also know that go to go to Arco Arco isn't a kill on this thing, so I don't need to like rush into this yet. I heal up a little bit here, but he does bring the heat on the back line with two beach and one zigzag. So unfortunately, the plant's not gonna live to the next round. But he's at two energy, we're at seven. And this is what I mean, you know, I'm able to survive here, and even if he played like a leaf bug last round and gained one energy back two arcos and a rice i'm still gonna get those cards off even if he plays three aqua cards i either last stand or i straight up live but i definitely last stand if nothing else and i get the value out of them so that would have been fine more or less wow interesting so because he only has two energy and i know he can't kill me i actually hold on to one of the arcos for the next round potentially to survive
drive again by using some some shield or just to throw him off in other words i don't even need to play it right now it's not necessary when i know i'm gonna go first because my beast is 45 speed and his midline is slower than a normal aqua i think it's like 52 because it has two beast parts can't seem to click it right now but i knew in game that i'd go first and now I can get some extra value. Look at this, four more beast cards of value, which is just amazing. Um, the Arco really getting to shine there quite a bit. Just allows me to have more of a clip on my backliner for the end game. And here's the other thing about beast at the midline. It is about the control. It's about being able to do this and have a full hand on your back because you know your reptile often does have to two v one things with a big combo, a little shield, and then doing it again. We're getting to see those traits shown here in the past couple games, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Crit Theory special on that one, we'll take it. He was on his way out anyway, cause these two laggings would have finished him off. But I mean, getting to expedite the game there and completely remove that Aqua is something to be happy about. Cause now we're up to five energy. And I think because, you know, I weakened him down to 420 this round and he only has two energy, we just fire away here. Both beast cards at the mid, we're gonna use uh, obviously the Jaguars on the back as that's additional beast damage to kill this player. Plant. And I think that that is just going to be enough. Big, nice 139. And then even the risky against the plant, 136, nothing to scoff at. So it's not the prettiest build ever, but when axes are super expensive and you're on a budget, sometimes you have to get creative. And I'm kind of hoping that that's what those first two games were able to display. I think it's time for us to celebrate and have some fun. It's been an amazing journey and we are reaching the end of the course. So I'm gonna finish things off with an insane team. This is the Pirro build. He is a CTG member, we train together. I just think this is so awesome what he's done. So I'm gonna break it down. Why don't we start with his version of it and then go from there. Up front, we have a high damage tank, Scarab, Hotbutt, Cactus, and then Sirius. We can see this is also equipped with some nice shield. You can get upwards of 200 depending on the card combos you draw. And Scarab prevents the opponent from healing. So if they have Zigzag, Herbivore, or, you know, Rosebud, anything like that, the plant will not be able to heal up. At the midline position, we have our bug with discards. This is really nasty in the mid game to limit the opponent's options. We need at least one high damage card card on the back. Here we have Sandal. As you can see, it's balanced with shield as well across the board. Obviously, bugs are bad against aquas and birds, so the fish snack is vital here to give us a little more longevity and make sure that we can actually use these discards without dying. And last, but certainly not least, we have one of the best axes in the game. Parupiro has the 48 speed disable sword. There is only a handful of these in existence. It's Hotbutt Kestrel. Chomp green thorns. A quick refresher here. We disable the horn, we disable the mouth. The guy is basically crippled. It takes away half of his arsenal. And bear in mind, the game plan here is that we discard a bunch of his options right before the 1v1 anyway. It's almost like playing Gravelant, but probably even better, to be honest with you. Green Thorns, when comboed with Hotbutt, gets twice as much shield. So let's say you played two of these and just had two energy for a Hotbutt Chomp. That's over 210 shield, which is nuts. Here's what we did. I am gonna just stick with my Biden's tank. I love this guy. You've seen it throughout the entire course. It's no secret. I hope this is sticking as a really important piece of information as long as the meta is like this once you get up to top 500 to top 100 this is a gem for these games i have the same exact bug at the midline and the same build on the back just a hair slower 47 speed instead of 48 but i'm happy with this why because this is faster than every obnoxious 46 speed terminator dusk that's out there so i will go first in that 1v1 i will turn his horn cards off so he can't slow me with lagging and i'll be in a great position I'm just gonna say it right now. If you're considering beast reptile option or bug reptile option, this is definitely the best route. If that team comp intrigues you and you have the money to spare, I mean, this is just certainly top 100 worthy. Padapiro is a top 100 player, obviously a very smart guy to put this combo together. That being said, it is steep. I am celebrating. This course is almost done. I've been working super hard to get this out to you guys. So I splurged. It's half an ETH for this battle. 
pack liner, but sometimes, you know, you got to treat yourself. Of course, you could go the more affordable option with a reptile. It's going to be a lot slower and that's fine as you're moving through the ranks, but at a certain point, you're going to want to be at least a little faster than, you know, 40, right? But if you love the build, you want to try it out. I mean, this is the more affordable way to do it. You get a bug at the midline, which is slower than your reptile. So you're still covered on the backdoor attacks, which is nice. You don't have to worry about your bug getting backdoored by a bird or something. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out that there are options. I think this is the most money I've ever put into one single Axie team, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, whatever. Let's do this. Let's have fun. Let's talk about this composition in game and see what it can do. Okay, we're up against the poison and, you know, I'm pretty happy. Happy to have the Bidens up front that could be clutch in this one. But the other thing is that with these backdoor builds, you do have potential to disrupt that quite a bit with your discards. My overall strategy with the discards is to wait until the tank is dead before firing them off because they're not as effective straight out of the gate. It's more so when they're down to two axes, you just start slamming their hand with discards and that is very painful. So that's usually what I do, but perhaps for Shrimpinators and things like this, I'm gonna budge a bit on that if I draw them. Try to control the game a little more and not get completely decimated by these back doors. Round one, I don't have a great play. Simply gonna pass. Okay, so he goes with a Kestrel and a bunch of plant cards. What's this gonna be? Is that double serious leaf bug? That would be pretty tragic. No, okay. It is just a grass snake and two leaf bugs. So he spends two energy, gets two back, He's going to be back at five here, same as us. Still nothing great. This is a build that I feel like takes some patience, right? Now, his tri spikes threat would be scary for my bug if he, if I knew he had a couple Kestrels, but he already played one, which makes it less likely. So I think I can kind of gamble here with one Bidens. I mean, I could do this to protect. That would make sure it goes to the back line. Uh, it seems like a bit more than I have to do. I'm just gonna try to do it like that. Okay, he's going back door. That's fine. He's using his biggest damage here. So I can be at least a little relieved that that's gone. And also he hit me with no grass snakes. Damn, down to 177. We're gonna have to navigate this one well. I've already seen one pumpkin. So I feel a little good about attacking here. I want to, I mean, killing the tank this round is kind of important so that I can use this to also get damage on the midline before he ends up dying. So there is a little urgency here. Not gonna completely freak out, but I'm thinking this, this and this. I don't know, is that enough? That might not be quite enough, we'll see. Really hope it is, otherwise, mm, yeah, miscalculated there. Not enough yet. Again, new team, so a little unfamiliar. I should have been able to see this though, but that's okay. The fact that the plant lives for one more round is actually not too bad. Splits his draw up a little bit. There's a sandal at least, and our bug is still healthy. We have no poison on that, which is a good thing. Ah, uh, I feel like I need to protect a little here. I'm gonna try it like this. Okay, all right, he's not really caring about defending his tank, so we're getting off the hook here a little. He just finishes off the plant. I kind of lost, lost track of energy, but I feel like he has a lot. Okay, now not a terrible draw here. So we have to pay attention that he can't hit me with his more dangerous Axie, which has Kestrel. He can't hit my bug with that because he goes first here on his team. I mean, I think I just do this. Ah, oh, my backliner is going to die. Damn, I'm forced into doing this just to try to get the kill. Okay. Not the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Hits me with a poison. Oh, wow. Puts all of the poison on my bug. I guess that makes sense because the back line here could be in trouble. I wonder where he's at with his cards. We get the unnecessary crit. I'm gonna try to disable one of his high damage cards here at least uh, and get a little damage in with the Kestrel. Oh wow. I feel like we got rid of his uh, toothless bite somewhere along the way with a discard. Oh my God, do I have enough to actually pull this off? I have the speed advantage, I'm just so weak. And he spent an entire clip right there on my bug, damn. This is gonna be a lot of shield if I play all of it. The problem is I don't think I should play all of it because I don't wanna draw more of these vines. I really wanna draw some big damage next round. Let's turn off the mouth cards. That's not really gonna do much, but obviously I need to play these three. You'll see the shield go from 130, I believe up to 160 with the vine dagger bonus. Yeah, 168, that's definitely nothing to scoff at. I mean, look, we are durable. We crit the crit theory special on the last final games of our course. Come on, let's go. 
So he's going to go with Grass Snake and then Furball. But we're alive. Okay, we need the draw. That's what I'm talking about. This Axie doesn't have shield. Oh no, we're the same speed. We're the same speed. Please live, please live, please live. He's got to be short, right? He's got to be short on cards. One Grass Snake. He's got nothing. He's totally down to three cards. This is the power of the discard bug. We're going to pull this win off. Let's go. Disable Saurus coming through. That one is probably worth looking at on the replay to see what happened. I believe this is what gets chucked away because there was a point where any other Grass Snake team would have backdoored my Dusk a second time to get the kill. And when he went straight into my bug, that was just a result of not having it as an option and freaking out kind of, not wanting to lose more cards to my discards. Look at that, boom, boom, gone. He's down to three cards. This is crazy. And this is the other thing, like these teams kind of spam cards, which just means with your added utility here, you can really make their options bleak. And remember, you never draw more than two of the same card till everything's been drawn. So he played one toothless. That second one was like sayonara. He's not gonna get one until, you know, a couple rounds from now, basically. Okay, I'm still pretty uncomfortable at this point. This round, I really wasn't sure what to do, but it seemed like killing his mid couldn't be terrible. <laughs> So that's what we uh, went for. And this is crazy. Like, he's got so much energy and no choices. That's just a sad position to be in if you're him. Discards continue. Unnecessary crit, but we'll take it. And this is where he got into trouble. You know, he's feeling like, I got to kill the bug. I can't lose more cards. But it leaves me alive. And then, like, we're pretty good now. I think he's down to three. And he must have just got like a double toothless draw on the last round, which is pretty hilarious. Yep. Amazing. So you can see here, very strong build, a lot of fun. You can pull out games even when it feels like you might not be able to. You can do it. As we've seen here, really satisfied with that win. Okay, we're up against this reoccurring double plant madness. Uh, it's just becoming more and more popular. But damn, if we get to this 1v1, he is in serious trouble. We get to disable his mouth and horn. Granted, he can disable our mouth too, but we definitely win in that exchange, I think. Round one versus this type of build that's sort of slow and clunky and usually not gonna be all that aggressive in round one, I'm always gonna do the double serious. I don't think I'm gonna force any of these damage cards yet. Just gonna play this and then go from there. I still would like to see, you know, his high shield cards <laughs> get played before firing away. Damn, he gets a good draw. We're not gonna get any serious value, which is quite unfortunate. I think I have to pass once more and hopefully not get too much energy taken from me. The ideal would be he steals no energy here, hopefully. Okay, he's coming for the attack. So, so far I've seen a ton of aqua cards, couple plant cards up front, nothing back here. He still has three energy. Do I want to try to pass one more time? No, I don't think so. Actually, yeah, maybe I do. Cause you know, he can draw cards from bone sale. It seems likely I attack here. I'm gonna risk it. Wow, he passes, that's crazy. Okay, so I have to be a little defensive now. He has five energy. I actually want to get in all of my discards here because I'm expecting actually not too many aqua cards, but mostly like hot butts to turn off pincer. So I'm going to put up a little bit of defense and mostly just go for the discards this round. Okay, so we're gonna get a couple of these in here, and but my read was correct in that he's kinda should be aqua depleted. So at least I can buy some time, limit options. He'll get one back from the bone sale, but that's not the end of the world. We give him that bug crit right on the mouth. And now I feel like we, we are at least, you know, having a chance to take some control here. I feel like he shouldn't have a lot of options. This definitely looks like an overkill slightly maybe, but yeah, damn. See, this is me getting used to the build. Because after that last round, I should be feeling like kind of safe to just go minimal here as well. But that's not the end of the world. We overshoot by one. And now, I think I just do this. I've been able to keep an entirely full hand on my back line, which is good. Yeah, let's lock up this kill here. I wonder what his cards are looking like right now. His cards and his options. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think he's all that hot right now with his choices. That looked like kind of a depleted round for him. I don't know if this kills. 
Ah, 20 HP. But yeah, like playing the beach randomly, that just feels like a bit of a panic play. Let's play one chomp here. Let's play one chomp. I mean, I almost have an entirely full hand, so I can just actually do a chomp and a vine and then next round draw everything back. Okay, I probably could have got away with just a vine here actually, but not the end of the world. We have a speed advantage. We have a move set advantage. And I think I'm gonna do this. I think I should do it like probably, probably like that, just to ensure that I get the most damage out of it. Okay, he's got 220 shield. Hmm. Yeah, so I don't need to end with the chomp because I know he's pretty much always going to try to play a zero cost uh, to get rid of it. So I just decided to go under the shield. We did like 40 extra damage become because of it, as you can see. Okay, now we're in the situation. Wow, he can't play beach or zigzag. He can only play hot butt and bidens. That is a tough position for him to be in. And I only have two energy. I'm sure he has way more energy than me, but I do still feel like I have control of the game because I was able to just save cards and he can't heal too. That's the other thing, he can't heal up. Yeah, 110 shield. We can live with that. Let's go, let's chip this away. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have played the vine there. I don't need it. I don't need to do that. I would rather keep my hand full. Okay, we're learning, we're learning. So I think what I do now is if I get a vine again, I don't play it. I just go Kestrel. He's just gonna burn out to death. This is so sick. Oh, wait a minute. Do I have a full, completely full? I have a completely full hand, don't I? Two Kestrels, two, no. I have one extra card missing, one hot butt missing. So yeah, I'm not even gonna bother with a vine. Just play these, guarantee that I get a full hand next round. We're gonna do a little damage. This is such a brutal dusk to be up against. Like, could you imagine you got all the energy in the world and you just can't do anything? Ouch. It's like, gra it's gravel 2.0 is how I see it. Feels good. Feels good for me, not for him. And now I think it's just, can do this again. Rip, rip to him. And that backliner is normally an absolute nightmare to face, but we turned it into mush. And uh, wow, what a way to end the PVP Mastery Course, two wild wins with an amazing team comp brought to you by a fellow CTG member. All of these games were happening in the top 50, maybe slightly between 50 and 100 at some point, but they're just here to show you that everything I laid out is competitive, winnable. I wouldn't show you guys or recommend you guys something if I didn't have all the faith in it that it can take you to where you want to go. So I gave it everything here. I'm super proud of you all for sticking with this. I mean, there it is, in-game execution. We covered all the bases. It's now up to you to decide which team comp you want to start with, but uh, I hope that it's a goal for you to eventually mix with all of them. Each and every one of them is special in its own way. There's always cute bunny antenna teams when you really want to go nuts. After you've gotten established with some of these rock solid classic teams, you're going to be well equipped after this. And I just, you know, I want to say too, revisit this course, watch all the team comps, expand your knowledge, keep on learning. I will see you in the conclusion and in the bonus footage as well.